From nothing comes chaos, and from chaos the world is born. This is the beginning of the story of creation, according to the ancient Greeks. The myth of creation opens a window into their culture, thoughts, and ideological values of the time. Welcome to Teller's Compendium. We are going to explore the myth of creation as told by the ancient Greeks. This is a dysfunctional family tragedy the whole way through, from the troubled marriage of Mother Earth and Father Sky, to the story of their grandson Zeus, chief of the Olympian gods. If you find value or entertainment in this video, please consider subscribing, give it a thumbs up, and hit the notification bell to be alerted about new content. Before there was anything, there was only chaos, a dark abyss from which all others emerged. From chaos came the first primordial elements, Gaia, the Earth Mother, Tartarus, a great pit that lay beneath the earth, Eros, the primordial embodiment of love and desire, Erebus, who was darkness, and Nyx, who was night. Gaia then creates her husband, equal to herself, the sky, called Uranus, or Uranus. Now Uranus declares himself ruler of the cosmos and is a lusty old guy. He descends from the heavens every day to lie with his wife, the earth. From this union, Gaia gives birth to many children, including the Titans, who were the first gods, as well as the one-eyed Cyclops and the Hecatonchires, who are chaotic giants with 100 arms and 50 heads. However, Uranus is a tyrannical and jealous ruler and can't stand the sight of the monstrous Cyclops and Hecatonchires. In order to no longer have to look at them, he locks them away in the womb of the earth. This causes Gaia great pain, and so she seeks to dethrone Uranus, end his tyranny, and free her children. To do this, she enlists the help of her other children, the Titans. But they were afraid of their father, and only the great Titan Kronos stood forth and was courageous enough to accept the scythe of diamond that his mother gifted to him. And so Kronos lay in wait for his father, ambushing him with the scythe. He castrates him, ending his reign over the cosmos. With the defeat of Uranus, Kronos now became ruler of the gods in the cosmos. He marries his sister Rhea, as it was not unusual for the gods to marry their siblings. In fact, it was not uncommon for elite Greeks in the ancient world, which is a reflection of their societal values in the mythos. The reign of Kronos ushered in a golden age for the world, and this is when the first race of men is created. These first men were said to live for a thousand years, feasting and carefree in a paradise beyond the reach of all evils. However, like his father, Kronos eventually became a jealous and cruel tyrant. When he became angry with his brothers the Hecatonchires for their great strength, he again locked them away in the dark places of the earth, causing Gaia great sadness and pain. And so Uranus and Gaia foretold that Kronos' own children would despise and betray him, just as he had done to his own parents. He grew fearful of this, and when Rhea, his wife, bore him children, he would swallow them whole. Rhea was horrified by this, and when she was ready to bear her last child, Zeus, she hid him in a cave and instead presented Kronos a boulder wrapped in swaddling cloth. Kronos did not notice this trick and swallowed the boulder immediately. Zeus was raised by nymphs in secret and vowed to usurp the throne from his cruel father. 
When Zeus grew up, he returned home. He disguised himself as a cupbearer for Kronos and slipped a potion into his wine. The potion caused Kronos to vomit up the children he swallowed, fully grown. And now Zeus's brothers and sisters were free. With the Olympian gods free, they set upon the Titans, and a war ensued that lasted ten years. Zeus freed his uncles, the Cyclops and the Hecatonchires, enlisting their help to defeat the Titans. The Cyclops were great blacksmiths and forged weapons for the Olympians, including a great trident for Poseidon, a helmet of invisibility for Hades, and lightning bolts for Zeus. The Hecatonchires, with their great strength, hurled boulders the size of mountains at the Titans. The Olympians, with the help of the Cyclops and the Hecatonchires, were finally able to overcome the powerful Titans and won the war. Zeus imprisoned all the Titans in Tartarus except for three. Atlas, the strongest Titan, who led their armies, Zeus made to hold up the heavens, forever separating it from the earth. He also spared Prometheus and Epimetheus, who had sided with the Olympians in the War of the Gods. Epimetheus created all the creatures of the world, while Prometheus sculpted a new race of man from clay. Again, the son had defeated the father and become ruler of the universe. Zeus divided up the world between his brothers, taking the heavens for himself. He gave Poseidon the seas. To Hades he gave the underworld and guardianship of Tartarus and the imprisoned Titans. Zeus took Hera for his wife, and they had many children, including Ares, Artemis, Athena, Apollo, Hermes, and Dionysus. If you enjoyed this story, check out some of our other stories, including the Norse and Egyptian mythos. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.